Hi folks, welcome to Clashine. My name is Nicola Brown and I'm delighted you've decided to join me while I share with you my journey about developing an environmentally conscious textile art practice in rural South East Ireland. Three words describe what I do, simple, natural and crafted. Today in November 2020, I'm developing dye and print borders around my garden studio. But when the journey began, just about 16 years ago, the old farmhouse behind me had not been lived in since 1928. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about my progress over the years. I hope you enjoy the journey. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to open some bundles, some eco bundles, so you can see the magic of what homegrown vegetation can produce on fabric. My journey at Clashine began towards the end of 2004. I had discovered this wonderful old farmhouse, which hadn't been lived in since 1928. The architecture is the vernacular from our region. It would be stone built, slate roof, very, very simple, not too many windows because of wind in the winter. There had never been running water or electricity installed in the house and the inside was actually quite dry because the farmer had been storing machinery in the kitchen and downstairs and had also been using the upstairs to store grain. I stripped it out with a hammer and chisel myself. You can see the stone there and then bit by bit, it was renovated. Timber sash windows to duplicate what was there originally until it is as you see it today. The inside and out of the original house, which is to the left in this image, is lime plastered, making it breathable and more sympathetic for the period of the house. The modern extension on the right is built to look old, but it is actually using modern materials. Leading into the house, the kitchen is immediately off the doorway and the kitchen table and the kitchen itself are really the hub of the home. This is where I entertain, where I make felt, where I record videos of myself felting for my online workshops. And I also love cooking. So a Rayburn, which is a big, old looking, but not old functioning range is where I cook and where I can hang my textiles in front of to dry and air in the winter. Over the years, I've continued to upgrade and renovate the original house, plus work on the extension to make it more functional and practical for my day to day life in the country. While work was underway on the house, I started laying out gardens surrounding it very early on. At the beginning, I firstly put in some heritage apple and pear trees. I put in a cherry tree and I started laying out some simple borders, herbaceous borders to the front of the house, paving and gravel. I really like having a naturalistic style of gardening. So what some other people might see as weeds, I actually embrace within the planting scheme. I garden organically. And this means no herbicides or pesticides. So I do have to stay on top of things and have periodic crazy weeding sessions. I love sitting out at the front of the house as well and just absorbing the views, the sights, the sounds of the countryside. I love making the most of what's available here at Clashine. Here is a beautiful basket of foraged mushrooms from the front field. Here are some salad ingredients from the garden, some herbs, but also some flowers from the hedgerow and forage dandelion greens. Everything that I do, I try and be mindful of the environment without being pious about it. At least I hope I'm not. And I really enjoy a simple lifestyle, but a lovely quality of life here at Clashine. You may also see it does involve a glass of wine or the odd beer too. Several years after starting to renovate Clashine, my felting journey began. This was in 2007 when I participated in a hands-on workshop at a sustainable festival that I was joint organizer of. Wet felting is a fascinating process. Soft, fluffy fibers such as mohair and bamboo or maybe cashmere or yak 
are laid out in overlapping layers and by using soap, water and friction from your hands you can create incredibly strong two-dimensional pieces or sculptural felt such as these pieces I'm going to share with you now. Early felt of mine included colourful jewellery and simple sculptural shapes. Everything was inspired by nature and the landscape surrounding me, although I did do an interesting series which was inspired by sea slugs or nudie branches. In 2009, two years after starting felt making, I planted 13 and a half thousand trees at Clashine. This included one acre of sessile oak behind the house and seven and a half acres of ash in two separate plots. The trees grew and my textile practice developed. While teaching in Portugal, a good friend of mine, Taria Kwong, Chinese friend, introduced me to a technique called eco-printing, a simple process where natural vegetation is used to colour textiles. Through the centuries, powdered metal salts such as ferrous sulphate or alum acetate have been used to help fix natural dye colour onto fabrics. Because I work primarily with protein based fabrics such as wool, silk and my handmade felt, I'm able to use a technique called pot as mordant to help fix the colour. What this actually means is that the composition of the pot itself will have an effect on the finished colour and washed fastness of the textiles. This large pot in front of me, for example, the inner pot is cast iron and the prints that I achieve using this pot are darker than they would be if I was working in an aluminium pot, but they're also significantly stronger and more colour fast than if I was working in a copper pot. Once I discovered how magically eucalyptus leaves and bark printed in the pot, I started planting my own trees behind the house at Clashin. Every time I went near a garden centre or I was talking to anybody and I could track down a different variety, off I headed and popped it in. However, while the ash and the oak were growing really well in the other plots, disaster struck. I had been very careful when planting the trees to use stock that had been bred in Ireland. Sadly, however, the ash succumbed to a disease called charla or ash dieback. It had been imported from Europe on other stock and has now swept through our country. It was devastating having to see all the trees be cut down. I did manage to save timber for my wood fired boiler for heating the house. And in the spring of 2018, all the acreage was replanted. The upper six and a half acres now includes pedunculate oak, sycamore, spindle, hazel, mountain ash, alder, cherry, all sorts of beautiful broadleaf trees. The lower plot was planted with eucalyptus. I'm here in my front field and the plot behind me has got all my young eucalypts. That is the eucalypts that are not in the garden behind the house near the studio. So I have over 900 trees planted down here. There are a variety of different um, eucalyptus. And the ones behind me, the tallest ones that you can see there, I'm quite tall, but they are really tall. Those are eucalyptus nitens. And these have only been in, this is their third season growing here at Clashine. So you can see how big they've grown in such a short space of time. This particular so one is Glaucessens. Moving on, this is eucalyptus gunnii. It's got a more uh, bluish color to the leaf. And the juvenile foliage is quite round, but as the trees get larger, the foliage then becomes longer. So you can tell often eucalypts have different foliage, whether they are juvenile or whether they are mature. This smaller tree here is the subcrenulata, longer, thinner leaves, and you can see the younger foliage there. This top is made from lamb's wool, which was woven locally at Cushendale Woolen Mill. And the red and the purple prints are both from eucalypts. 
Now I'm in the field at the side of the house, just to the side of the garden. You can see some eucalyptus trees behind me, the picnic table, the house, and in the background there, the bluey uh, grey building is the garden studio. So behind the garden then I have one acre of oak with some lines of mixed species and the mixed species are birch and they are Scots pine and those oak, the birch and the Scots pine, they have been the longest in the ground here at Clashine. I planted them in 2009 so they have now been in 11 years and you can see how tall some of them are there in the background. We're going to walk up to the younger plot of mixed deciduous trees now. So we're going to take a little walk around here. It is October now, so the end of October coming into November. So there are some leaves on the trees now. It's Ireland, we're quite mild, but there aren't that many. But I'm going to show you some of the different uh, varieties that I have growing here. Um, this looks like just a little twig here. It's up to approximately my chest height. This is actually mountain ash or rowan. It's one of the first deciduous trees in Ireland to colour up and lose leaves. So the leaves have already actually gone from that. But come the spring, there'll be beautiful leaves. And in another few years, that's going to provide wonderful berries for the birds. Here we have hazel. So I was trying to plant as many trees and varieties and species here as I could that would have grown traditionally here in Ireland and I wanted leaves that would be useful in the printing pot but I also wanted the biodiversity for wildlife and trees that were useful so the hazel is going to be wonderful in years to come because I'm going to be able to harvest my own nuts. Here I have some sweet chestnut or Spanish chestnut. These will have wonderful nuts that sadly in Ireland don't come to fruition from the edible point of view very often but again will provide wonderful food for wildlife and the leaves from the chestnut this particular variety of chestnut they print nicely but the wonderful thing the catkins on these chestnuts the catkins in the spring and the summer late spring early summer they give glorious graphic eco prints so they are something that I was really keen to have growing here. So the wind is picking up a little bit but I'm down here now I've walked across to the far end of the plot to where the alder are and you can see as I swing around the low trees so they would be the oak, the chestnut, the cherry, the rowan, the spindle, sycamore etc etc and then as I come around here are the alder they have only been planted for the same length of time as the other trees but you can see how they absolutely thrive in this slightly moister area at the far corner of the plot. Here are some recent eco printed felt exhibition pieces just so that you can fully appreciate how incredible the power of vegetation combined with a simple process and handmade textiles can be. Before I share a little bit about creating the print and dye borders and putting a new garden studio behind the house at Clashine. I'm going to prepare a few bundles and pop them in the eco printing pot. That way I'll be able to have a reveal at the end of this presentation. This is over two meters of fabric and it's part of my forest floor series. It's actually a commission for a good friend in Australia and will eventually be made into cushion covers. Although I eco print regularly, it takes several hours to roll up the bundles and get the vegetation laid out in a design that I'm happy with. And this big piece here, which is the most important of these bundles, this is over two meters of wool. And this is a commission for a friend in Australia, part of my forest floor series of prints, where I'm using windfall leaves and bark from the trees at Clashine to create the design on the fabric. So I've got a large propane burner here and this is my 40 litre pot. It's an aluminium pot which gives a certain colour to the background of the textiles and I'm going to pop these in now and because of the colours I'm hoping to achieve today on my commission I've actually set this up as a totally new pot. Usually I reuse the water for six or seven months at a time but today I've just given the pot a bit of a swill out. I've added 
clean well water and some vinegar and I'm going to steam the bundles to start with rather than submerge them then later on they're going to be submerged into the pot liquid and that's because I'm aiming for a specific warm tone prints on my commission and everything else these are samples just so I can show you the actual process so set up in here I have a riddle which is a garden sieve and that's going to raise the bundles over the boiling liquid and then later on during the process I'll take that out top up more liquid and the bundles will get submerged you can also see they're all rolled on metal pipes so the metal that I roll on actually affects the color of the bundles themselves. If I roll on copper, such as this one, I don't get the same effect as if I rolled on rusty metal. But each gives a different effect and each is beautiful in its own right. And certain vegetation like certain pipes, etc., etc. So those are the first three. And I'm actually going to put this one over the others in the opposite direction so it's actually suspended by them and immediately i'm going to pop the lid on and bring that back up to temperature so i want this to be boiling aggressively really really steaming because it's the heat coupled with the vegetation and the treatment of the fabric beforehand and the type of fabric that achieves the best prints so eucalyptus leaves like an acidic environment so in addition to water in this pot i've put some vinegar and then later on if i want to darken the colors i can just add a piece of rusty metal this is an old iron so i often drop this in and i attach it on the side of the pot and if i want to create a different color in my pot liquid i might add onion skins i might add eucalyptus leaves various vegetation to create different color and that will then be on the outside of my bundle and it just adds a little bit of depth to the prints and color achieved so several hours in here for the pieces that don't have eucalyptus and up to five hours for the pieces that are wrapped with eucalyptus i'm really looking forward to seeing what these are like later in august 2018 a section of ground behind the house and below the oak plantation at clashin was cleared the ground was leveled and a base put in ready for a new garden studio. I actually used recycled plastic base tiles that slotted together to support the studio and in it came. It's 24 feet by 12, not huge, but the largest size I could put in without actually obtaining planning permission. The studio is lined with wool in keeping with my environmentally friendly ethos. It's been slabbed up, it's been sealed, so the floor is wood with insulation underneath. The walls and the ceiling are insulated with wool and everything has been painted now so that it looks clean and smart and hopefully in the future I can potentially hold little shows there. Although it had taken some months to get to this stage, by the beginning of 2019, the studio was ready for me to use and to start teaching in. It had long been an ambition of mine to grow more plants to use in the studio and to create an area that would be a haven for wildlife and increase biodiversity. In the late spring and early summer of 2019, I laid out new print and dye borders leading up to the garden studio. The plants that I put in were organic and I garden without pesticides or insecticides. It may look pretty chaotic here. This was the scene on the 4th and 5th of July 2019, but it's absolutely extraordinary how quickly everything settled in. The soil in the borders is clearly very fertile. It had been the topsoil that was scraped back from the ground in preparation for where the actual studio would sit. By spring 2020, all the plants were really established extremely well. And as you can see in this shot, the eucalyptus, which are beyond the studio, are also growing really, really well. In the middle of June 2020, I was able to harvest weld or reseda and comfrey for the first time to use in my dye pots. This was a really exciting day as I had never harvested anything other than leaves before 
And here I was with great big piles of flowers and vegetation sitting in the studio, just waiting to head in to the dye pot. The weld gave spectacularly sharp yellowy greens on vintage French linen and a softer colour on vintage Japanese kimono silk. Comfrey gave more buttery colours. Here you can see it on a vintage French linen napkin. And it was just really fascinating to see the sort of colour I could produce from my own plants for the first time. As summer 2020 progressed, the young eucalypts in the lower plot and the deciduous trees in the upper plot really grew tremendously. Wildflowers bloomed and there was a profusion of bees, butterflies and other wildlife. In the dye borders, the butterflies were a really firm favourite. This is Red Admiral. There were multiple Red Admirals every day. Peacock butterfly, absolutely beautiful, particularly enjoying the Monarda here. And then I was very, very excited. An unusual and rare butterfly for Ireland is the Comma butterfly. And towards the late summer, I had my first Comma. And this was here every day for five days running. So this was really, really exciting. It's now November 2020 and the plants in the dye borders are all dying back for the winter. We've had our first hard frost and you can see here from the comfrey that it's really sort of collapsed. I do, however, have it dry in the studio and I also have 60 kilos of it in my freezer, which is fantastic. There are plenty of weeds, unfortunately, on the wood chip paths between the different borders but this is something that over the winter I'm going to just dig out you know what's there and then in the spring when there are new fresh seedlings I'm going to have to root them out too. It's a disadvantage to gardening organically but so be it. My big project at the moment is putting water tanks on the studio at the front and the back and also I want to put a water tank on the house. This is going to uh, provide really nice water obviously for the plants but also for the eco printing pot and for various jobs around the garden. It's a beautiful November morning here at Clasheen. There is a little bit of farmyard machinery noise behind me but I hope you can forgive that because I wanted to share with you the excitement of undoing the bundles that I processed yesterday. So this larger dark brown one here, this is the commission that I'm printing and the other three are samples that I want to just see how my vegetation that I gathered the other day from the property is printing at the moment. This one doesn't have as dark an outside as the large one because with the commission after a couple of hours, I actually then submerged that in the pot rather than steaming it. And I added a lot of eucalyptus nighton's leaves to the water, hence the dark color on the outside. And once I open the bundles, you're going to see how this affects the overall background color and the pattern on the fabric. So it's like all my birthdays and holiday days have come together at one time when I open bundles. And I really hope that you enjoy this part of the process. Oh, look at this. This is the color from the onion skins. This particular piece is rolled on a copper pipe. And can you see this modification of color up here where it's yellower? That's from the actual pipe itself. This particular piece is one that has cotinus or smoke leaves in the middle. So I'm really hoping that we're going to get leaf prints from these leaves too. Interestingly, these have not printed as strongly as I would like, although you can see a beautiful leaf print here from the back of this large leaf. The second piece that I'm going to reveal this morning is wool with oak leaves, and this is on a rusty metal pole. So I hope that this actually gives stronger prints than were achieved on the cotinus printed fabric. You can see here where the rusty metal was, a different color.
This piece is definitely more successful than the piece that was rolled on the copper pipe. And that's because the iron is having a reaction with the tannin in the leaves. So the leaf prints are significantly stronger. The large length of wool for the commission for my friend, it was actually too large to unroll too long for the table. So I have it out here on the grass and I'm very, very happy with what I'm seeing so far. I always take my time removing the leaves and the bark so that I can see which prints I particularly like. For example, that one there is from the Eucalyptus subcranulata from the lower plot. This large leaf is Nighton's and as I go along, I'm making notes in my head and taking photographs and videos so that I can then use this knowledge for future pieces in the dye pot. Once all the vegetation has been removed from the fabric, I need to give the pieces a rinse in a bicarbonate of soda solution to neutralize any effect of iron. Then they get a really good machine wash and an iron. Here are the four pieces that I processed to share the excitement of the reveal with you. And they have had various results. I particularly like the commission, which clearly was the piece I was concentrating on. Graduating in color from dark at the bottom, and then on the other end, which is folded in half, it's much lighter, but with warm golden tones and plenty of red. The second piece is the onion skin piece, and this is the one that had cotinus prints on the reverse side. And in fact, while I didn't think the cotinus prints were very strong when I was revealing the bundle, they actually are very nice in the finished piece. Then there's the oak piece. This will be really nice to use possibly for a backpack to feature the, the nice prints in certain areas. Um, but the final piece, which was blackberry, this has not been successful. Um, so this piece I'm going to overprint. There was not enough rust involved in the piece, enough iron. And this piece I will overprint and make sure that I submerge it rather than steam it. So I hope you've enjoyed the reveal of these pieces. And I hope my friend is happy with her commission. A lot of my recent work has been in warm tones and prints but I do also work with cooler colors and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more of this with plants from my dye borders in the future. If you're watching the end of this presentation, I hope you've really enjoyed my journey and learning a little bit about what I do here at Clasheen. Maybe you might like to join me for an online workshop or possibly you're interested in commissioning a piece of art or some wearable textile. You can find me online at nicolabrown.ie. I post daily on Instagram, so that would be instagram.com forward slash clashine. And I also have a Facebook business page, Nicola Brown hyphen clashine. If you're interested in learning how to eco print or felt for yourself, my online workshops might be the thing for you. Because of the current worldwide travel situation, I foresee that I will be teaching online for 2021, probably 2022 as well. Already I've had hundreds of people, great fun and some fantastic things have been made. So if you look at my link on my Instagram profile, that's instagram.com forward slash clashin, you can actually link through and see some of my students work where I have put virtual albums of students work online, if that's something that interests you. So thank you again for your time. It's been a pleasure and over and out from Clashine.